who was not compelled to wear the hijab. Instead, she chose to. This is Sandra Noe. There was always a little bit of something missing in my life. I guess I was seeking the meaning of it all, but in all the wrong places and in all the wrong ways. At the end of the Second World War, Europe is in ruins. My journey, uh, I guess I could say, begins before I was even born. In 1957, when my parents immigrated to Canada from Mannheim, Germany. My family is Jewish and during the war they were in hiding. My paternal grandfather was captured and put into a camp and my mother lost her father. Both my parents, Trudy and Carl, after the war were quite bitter and uh, desperately wanted to start a new life in a new country. They tried really hard to be Canadian. They changed their names and downplayed their heritage quite a bit. Unlike my parents, I reached out and embraced my Jewish faith. But I was still seeking something I don't know what. And when my search was over, Sandra was gone and in her place was Selma. Hello. Selma was the name I chose when I converted from Judaism to Islam. Selma was one of the Prophet's wives and she was the nurturer. She was the one that uh, looked after everybody. And to me that was very close to my own name because I searched the origins of Sandra. Sandra means helper of mankind. My interest in Islam goes way back to the 70s. Um, I, I was probably about 13 when I heard that Cat Stevens had converted to Islam and was now known as Yusuf Islam. And I found that so fascinating and wanted to know about Islam. In 2001, I was hit by a drunk driver and had to learn to walk again. And as my car was flying through the air, I, I was totally awake, thinking, okay, is this how I'm going to die? At the time that the accident happened, I was in a position in my life where I really didn't know what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. I would say that the, the biggest turning point was my mother's illness with cancer and her, um, her death in 2005. And that really solidified my move towards Islam. I went to India in 2005, two weeks after my mother's death. It was the month of Ramadan when I got there. My first night there, the Adhan went off at 5 in the morning and I was so overwhelmed by the power of the sound of the Adhan that I was actually terrified. I went to the window, I stood there listening, and there came over me a feeling of complete happiness and peace and belonging. That was the moment that made me take that leap, that leap of faith. The Shahada is the um, affirmation one makes when they convert to Islam. And it is very simple. Um, it's just the affirmation that there is only one God and no other God. And that's what you believe in. As I understand, uh, Sister Salma, you did uh, some studies prior to this moment about Islam. And what always fascinated me were the similarities between Judaism and Islam. And I just found that the connection between the two was so very powerful. The beginning of your step towards Islam by declaring your faith and speaking the following two sentences, which it's to bear witness that there is no God but Allah and to bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. Without any further delay, we will go ahead and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his blessing in that blessed moment that we are witnessing all of us. Allah, Allah, Allah. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illa. Illa. Allah. Allah. Wa ashhadu. Wa ashhadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Rasulullah. Rasulullah. 
I bear witness. I bear witness that there is no God. That there is no God. But Allah. But Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness that Muhammad. That Muhammad is his messenger. Is his messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mubarak. <laughs> <laughs> it was really awkward having to tell my friends and my family. I mean, there's no way of saying that I had moved away from Judaism to become a Muslim. When I started to wear hijab, uh, apart from being terribly nervous for the first four weeks, um, was um, how much uh, better I became um, at thinking about my words and thinking about my reactions to others. I'm constantly amazed at how people react to the veil. I just don't get what the big deal is. I guess the problem is that people in North America perceive a veiled woman as oppressed and subservient. Maybe in some countries or in some regimes that might be true, but not here in Canada. Here we have the freedom to choose, and I chose to do this. What they don't understand is that it is a requirement for women to, to veil, to cover themselves. It says so in the Quran. I really like wearing this, this one, and I'm so glad that I've gotten better at putting this on. You know, I can't even imagine going out in public without it on. So tomorrow, I'm going to wear my hijab to work for the first time. I'm a little bit nervous. Um, I work as a legal assistant downtown um, in the Bay Street area, and uh, so dressing it there is a little conservative and there don't appear to be too many women wearing a hijab. The reception that um, I got from my colleagues was great for the most part. There was a lot of jaws dropping and a lot of funny looks and a lot of hesitation when they passed by my desk. Sadly, one of the worst experiences that I had came from within the Muslim community. On my way to Jummah prayer, which is the Friday noon prayer, my phone rang and it happened to be um, another Muslim that I knew, a Muslim woman. And she had said to me, um, are you still wearing your hijab? And I said, yes. And she said, well, all of my friends are wondering who the white girl is pretending to be a Muslim. And that kind of broke my heart because I wasn't pretending. It wasn't a fashion statement. People always assume that because I'm North American and I, and I am a convert to Islam, that I'm making a political statement. And, and I think it's more about making a statement of who I am in life. I'm a Muslim. Um, and I chose to wear hijab, no more, no different than uh, a Jewish man wearing a, a, a yarmulke. One of the um, myths that uh, people have is where they see a North American woman who has converted to Islam. They automatically assume if she's married, she must have done it for her husband because that's the only way to do it. And uh, you know. Wonderfully enough, it's not. Walnuts? Yeah. Mm -hmm. date. I was a Muslim woman wearing the veil much before I met my partner. My partner, Sheikh Jamal Zahabi, <laughs> came to Canada from Lebanon in the 80s. He's an imam at the Meadow Vale Islamic Center. I knew of him, but it wasn't until mutual friends introduced us that we found out how much we had in common. My son Colin, who is now 23, hasn't met his new family as yet, but he's really excited and supportive. Initially, uh, he wasn't so sure about it, probably because it was a lot to deal with at the time, but he's okay now. Growing up, 
We moved around a lot, and most of my memories were from growing up on a farm. We were quite isolated and only had each other for company. My teen years were very challenging. It's not that I was just rebellious, I was just unhappy. I couldn't stand being at home, so at 17, I left. My father hasn't seen me with, hij with a hijab, and my father hasn't met my husband yet. So we are going as a family, and I'm a little bit nervous. I'm not sure what my dad's going to say. I'm not sure how he's going to react. What do you think? Do you think he's nervous? At the time um, that my, of my, the discovery of my mother's illness, my father and I were not close. We never really had... A, a